Today we're going to do a little bit of digging and find out where all the spacer blocks have gone in Squarespace. If you've been following my tutorials over the last few years, or have been a regular user of Squarespace, you will have seen this scaffolding approach to website design on the platform. In the last 12 months or so, I've been looking at Wix as an alternative which had a more fluid way of building websites, but on the flip side, there was more to go wrong. Squarespace have taken more than just a little leap in that direction. But the more I'm using the new Squarespace Fluid Engine, the more I'm liking it. So we're going to have a look at the new format. And we're also then going to flip over to a 7.1 page layout in the classic editor to show you what I mean when we're talking about spaces. So let's just take a look at how we build website pages these days. And we thought we'd treat you to a quick peek at our new Pixel Haze Academy website, which is under production at the moment. So there's a lot of content to go in here yet. Yeah, there's a lot more to work, but we're looking at breaking down our content into three islands of creativity for creatives, those looking to set out in their career in the creative industry, schools and colleges, and many of the projects, boot camps, and after school clubs that we're running with local schools here in Wales. And then finally, last but not least, for small business owners just looking to get by and survive the ever moving world of design. If we look down through the page, we can see that there are a number of things that would be more complicated to do in Squarespace 7.1 before the Fluid Editor. So we can see this image here has been moved off to the left and actually fills the full screen without the need of adding in a grid gallery. This image then is smaller but longer, meaning that we can get more height in our image. And actually, if we were to crop the image more, we could bring this up to the top, but I quite like the little bit of space we've got at the top there. And then likewise, this island on the right goes, sweeps off to the right hand side of the page. We then keep a formal structure for the middle three columns, undecided about whether we're going to use the accordion effect for each subcategory or whether that's just too much content. I'm leaning towards the latter, but we'll revisit that again. Then we've got a text block with a background option, which is a new feature in the editor. A little toggle option there so we can actually set background colors behind text blocks now which is nice and then as we go into the news feed on our home page or the blog feed we can see once again that we can use this asymmetrical offset effect where we push all the posts over to the right and then have an introduction search field and category drop down to the left so all in all it's starting to take shape we then move towards a more formulated traditional way of building structures with an image here and our mailing list but again we can see that's flowing over to the right hand side of the page to allow us to continue that offset feel and then actually this is all one deep footer what it means then is that our links which isn't quite finished yet we can see that there's missing buttons and the spacing's a little bit out but what we hopefully you're demonstrating is how we can use these sections to link to our sister websites for the studio and plugin and template store. This is all one footer. So we're able to build out our footer section by section. So by having that deeper two tone footer, it just means that we can have these appearing on the bottom of every page, which is a massive benefit to us. So a far more bespoke layout that allows us more fluidity. And that is one of the real advantages of the fluid editor. Let's have a look at the alternative and we're going to add a new test page in the not link section. And we can see now what I was talking about earlier, where we've got these two links as part of the footer. So if I was to click edit, Add a new section and instead of selecting one of these, I can now go down to the classic editor. I won't click upgrade because we want to demonstrate how this works and then you may well recognize this format. So I've added a spacer. I'll add in some placeholder text. There we go. 
So the spacer allows us to scaffold and shape our page using a 12 column grid one section at a time. And then we could put images in here, for example, we could add in a quote block. And with the fluid editor, we can't quite do that. So what I'm going to do now is create a new section. Just put that as a heading two. I'm going to copy and paste this content in, in the new section to show you how we would do it without spacer blocks. So another example, let's put a spacer in to the left here, just to reduce the width of that section. And then maybe we'll add in a line. There's a little accent, mainly to demonstrate that we can do this effect without the fluid editor. So I'm going to press save there. We're going to click edit once again, and now we're going to reproduce this using the new fluid editor. So I'm going to add another section. I'm going to add a blank section from the top this time, not going down to the classic editor. And from here now, I'm going to go to edit section, go across to colors, and I'm just going to change the background color subtly, just so we can separate the two, differentiate them. And now instead of using and seeing the ovals in the plus icons, we can go to this block on the left and select text block, drop our content in. So we get a lot more flexibility, but at the moment I'm still finding that for most layouts, the old way was a little bit quicker because we still have to keep coming up to that left hand corner to add a new block. I'd love just this to move around with us just so we can essentially add things in much quicker because it's just quite slow at the moment. The other thing I'm looking for as well, hopefully will be added soon and we're actually looking to see if we can create a plugin for this, is to allow us to take a section or highlight multiple items or even just a short line like that and duplicate it. That would be nice. So I'm just going to reduce the width of that line. But we can see now that the spacer block is what allowed us to shove it down. So instead we can click, hold and drag it and it gives us the grid options for that. The other thing as well is the width of that line is too wide. And this is one thing where we do have a limitation. It's snapping the line to different width blocks where you either have a line that's too short or we have it so it's too close to the text. So in the fluid engine, we may have to just adapt accordingly. So if I click on it once, we can see there is an option to duplicate our line and I've never seen that before. So there we go, we learn as we go. I'm sure that's a new feature, I haven't seen that before. If it's been there all along, please leave it in the comment and I will eat humble pie. And uh, yeah, I'm quite embarrassed by that if it has been there for a while it hasn't and it's a new feature that I can get excited about. Okay, so I bet it's been there all the time. So there I'm just going to move that line across and now we can add an image. But Squarespace, if you are listening, it'd be great to have something a bit more fluid than having to go right up to the top left hand corner to add every single block. We can't duplicate it from the classic editor simply because it's not built that way. So we have to go back up here and select quote block. Click and drag it across. And there we go. Something similar. I might need to move that down a block. So we no longer have spaces unless you go back and use the classic editor layout. But at the same time, if we do it right, we don't need to. We've got the option now to build these layouts as we want. So that text block is too big. That's why I can't reduce the height of the entire section. So I just remove that text block, move that text block up. And there we go. So two similar, not identical layouts, both designed using the classic and then the fluid editor. 
Hope you've enjoyed. Leave a comment and let us know how you're getting on with the new Fluid Editor. If you've got anything that you'd like us to, or any topic that you'd like us to cover next time, again, leave a message and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>